I want to bring in now Trey Gowdy, former House Oversight Committee chairman, former prosecutor and Fox News contributor now. Uh, Trey, good to see you and talk with you, I should say, tonight. You know, yes, that question of what comes next is so important because William Barr will make a decision now, not only about what the public will see, but what Congress will see. Talk to me about the process. Well, I think it's important for your viewers, uh, Harris, to realize the reason we have Bob Mueller is because the Department of Justice, who otherwise would be handling this, felt like they had a conflict. So Mueller, in essence, worked for the Department of Justice. That is who the report goes to. Uh, the only obligation to notify Congress is if he had a recommendation that his supervisor, Rod Rosenstein or Bill Barr, did not follow. So what's going to happen is Barr's going to read the report. I think he is going to want to share as much as he can because Barr understands what I've understood from day one. Barr's number one job was to report on what Russia did. The, the second part of that is with whom, if anyone, did they do it. That's mm -hmm. the Democrat focus. That is their obsession. But that was not Barr's obsession. So I'm sure he will want to share with the intelligence communities this is the way to prepare for 2020 and beyond. Um, and and. The Democrats can subpoena him. They can bring Mueller to Capitol Hill. But we have three separate branches of government and congressional investigations. Do you remember, Harris, when the House Intelligence Committee had to vote to turn over transcripts to the special counsel? They yes. had to take a vote on that. Why, why didn't special counsel just go get them? Why, why did they have to ask another branch of government? Because we have three separate branches. Hmm. This report belongs to the executive branch. Uh, just like congressional investigations belong to the legislative branch, uh, it's not just classified information, grand jury material, Privacy Act. It's also the fact that the FBI and the Department of Justice do not exonerate people. That is not their job. Right, their job is it. to indict people. And, it's and really not even to write a report or hold a press conference. What Comey did with Clinton, and laying out all the reasons he could have charged her but did not set a terrible precedent for this country. Prosecutors should never do that. Either charge and shut up and go to trial or don't charge. But don't fail to charge and then lay out all the reasons that you could have and they should have. Well, it's interesting that you say that because in recent days, Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, said that he was going to stay on beyond the point that we thought he would be leaving mid-March. Uh, and, and what he's been saying in, in recent days and even sent a letter today uh, of this effect saying that there should be no details on anyone who is unindicted. What is the significance of that? And maybe it goes along with what you're saying, that if you didn't indict, if you didn't charge, move on. Well, it is manifestly unfair to name someone, say, in a conspiracy indictment as an unindicted co-conspirator. Uh, they can't prove that they didn't do it, and they're, they're not going to be in front of a jury that can determine their, their lack of guilt. So, so prosecutors have to be very, very careful naming people in indictments that are not going to eventually stand in front of 12 that are peers and have their peers pass judgment. The, the other thing about the report, it, it would not surprise me at all if they interviewed people who said six or seven different things. I mean, that's just the nature of eyewitness testimony. So in a political context, you're going to seize on whichever witness said whatever is most beneficial for you. And you're going to ignore the five other people who saw the stoplight was green and not red, which is why when politics and the criminal justice system collide, it is always the justice system uh, that perishes. I so I, I hope he does not. I hope he I hope he does not set 200 plus years of precedent in this country mm -hmm. about not forcing people to prove their innocence on his head. Uh, you can't prove your innocence. The president can't. He's not above the law, but he's also not below the law. And the fact that he is the president does not mean he should have to prove his innocence type. Not above and not below. Interesting way to put it. Trey Gowdy, I want to play, if we can, a video now that has just come in from moments ago. The ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, as you know, uh, has even said that there was evidence of collusion. Ed Henry and I were just talking about that. Uh, I want to just get his first reaction and then we'll talk more. I would first argue that the department cannot adopt a double standard and should cooperate uh, willingly. But if it doesn't, uh, we will have to subpoena the evidence. We will have to subpoena uh, Mueller or others to come before the Congress and answer questions because 
If there is evidence of a compromise, whether it arises level of criminal conduct or not, it needs to be exposed. Trey, is he saying that he won't believe this report if it does not show collusion or obstruction of justice or any other kind of a crime and this president and others will not be indicted as what we are learning tonight, that there are no further indictments? Harris, he's the saddest man in the United States of America. Oh, uh, not only did he have evidence of collusion on the president, but you were, may remember he also said the president may very well be indicted, and he also said he may be the first president who faces the prospect of jail. How does he get it so wrong, then, if that's the case? We don't know what's in the report, but we know no further indictments. What's he seeing that we're not seeing? Um, what he's seeing is a strategy to keep this cloud, this Russia cloud, over the administration until 2020. And that's always... I mean, Adam has seen nothing that I haven't seen. So how can two people have such disparate views of the evidence? I never saw any evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. And Adam says he has direct evidence. So I mean, two former prosecutors who are reasonable people cannot have views that disparate unless, unless you're looking at it through a political prism. Hmm. Um, Swalwell said that indictments were coming. Remember when he tweeted that out? Eric Swalwell, California ago. representative, Democrat. Yes. Yes, I mean, he's also on the House Intelligence Committee. So these guys know what the evidence is. They're very disappointed there are no more indictments because they said that there would be. And so they're going to try to drag this out. They're going to try to bring Barr and Mueller over to, to even though there are no indictments, which is which is a high standard. You, you have to prove these beyond a reasonable doubt to convict somebody in this country. But in politics, you just have to throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks. So if they can get Mueller... Uh, or bar and start saying, well, this witness said that, and this witness said this, uh, then it's a political win for them, even though it's a loss for the country. All right. We are just getting word here. Uh, Ed Henry, thank you. Uh, Attorney General William Barr has uh, left the building right now, um, and, and we'll report more detail on this as it happens, but we're telling you things as they're happening in real time. Trey Gowdy. Uh, it has been one year, 10 months, and including today, six days of this investigation. You were still on the Hill, and it is great to get your first response tonight uh, when all this thing began. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks. It was big news, and so far we haven't heard any backup to the president's tweet from the White House. We have inquired as to exactly what will be going on here. Will there be some sort of formal announcement that's made? What's the president going to do about it? We don't know. But since 1981, when uh, Israel annexed the Golan Heights, it has been not recognized as uh, being Israeli territory. It's been, been alternately called Israeli occupied territory. It has been called Israeli controlled territory. But now it appears as though very soon it will be officially recognized by the United States. The president tweeting a short time ago, after 52 years, it is time for the United States to fully recognize Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights, which is of critical and strategic importance to the state of Israel and regional stability. Uh, Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, is in the Middle East today. He did an interview with our Trey Yinks about 40 minutes before the president sent out that tweet. Trey asked Pompeo about it, and Pompeo said, I don't have anything to say about that right now. And then 40 minutes later, we get the tweet from the president. You mentioned that the Israeli prime minister, the beleaguered Israeli prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, will be here at the White House next week. He tweeted his thanks to the president a short time ago, saying, at a time when Iran seeks to use Syria as a platform to destroy Israel, President Trump boldly recognizes Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. Thank you, President Trump. Maria Bartiromo, we should point out, from our sister network, Fox Business Channel, is in the middle of interviewing the president. She no doubt will ask him about this. On an unrelated development, uh, the attorney general, Bill Barr, was over here at the White House. It, uh, his visit here uh, instantly raised some speculation as to whether the Mueller report might be forthcoming, but we're being told that it was just a routine meeting on national security. Dana? Yeah, the attorney general comes to the White House often. I can imagine that. Um, let me ask you also about this. Is there any let up in the McCain feud? No, no. And in, in, in fact, it was it was very strange yesterday. Obviously, the president over the weekend tweeted his displeasure about John McCain. It was related to the Mueller investigation because McCain, McCain got a hold of that unverified steel dossier and said, I didn't know what to do with it. So I passed it off to the FBI. That's what originally got the president going. And yesterday it was it was such a strange time for him 
to go into that because he was at this army tank plant, the only plant in the United States makes this Abrams A1, M1, A1 uh, tank. Uh, the president basically rescued that uh, plant from oblivion with uh, his uh, increased uh, defense spending. Uh, they've doubled the number of employees, or they will double the number of employees very soon. And li I mean, listen to, he had them eating out of his hands. Listen to what he said. Well, you better love me. I kept this place open. That I can tell you. They said, we're closing it. And I said, no, we're not. But then in the middle of all of this, the president took a big left turn back into his feud with John McCain. We remind you, John McCain died seven months ago, ripping McCain again for the Steele dossier, also ripping him for his vote over Obamacare, and then going on, way off script to talk about the McCain funeral. Listen to the whole thing the president said here. I have to be honest, I've never liked them much. Hasn't been for me. I've really probably never will. I endorsed him at his request and I gave him the kind of funeral that he wanted, which as president I had to approve. I don't care about this. I didn't get thank you. That's okay. We sent him on the way, but I wasn't a fan of John McCain. The president's renewed attacks against John McCain have drawn fire from some senior Republicans. Georgia Senator Johnny Isaacson, who is a big supporter of the president's policies, also a big supporter of the military, was on Georgia Public Broadcasting Radio yesterday saying that the president's comments are deplorable. Mm -hmm. And other big Republicans have weighed in as well, Dana. All right, John, and uh, let us know if you need us to send an arc. It looks like it's raining pretty heavy behind you. <laughs> it's about to stop, which is a good thing. <laughs> that is a good thing. Well, if you need help, let us know. Thanks. All right. Thank <laughs> you.